Okay, so we're at Motorcycle Live, let's go show. So we'll see what's around, see people that we haven't seen for a little while, look at the new bikes, see if there's any potential for supercharging, because that's what we do. Like what did you be speaking? Doing a wheelie at 140 mile an hour. That is so fast, isn't it? Hi mate, Richard. nice to see you here. Nice to see you again. So yeah. what, uh, what's next as far as projects are concerned for you? Um, I think we need to get Chris on the Rocket 300. He would really love that, he would love that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just such a beast. So what, uh, what can we put up against though? What's it, uh, what is it compared to? Anything, anything, whatever you can find, it'll slaughter. Right. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, 300 foot pound of torque, so 360 horsepower. So category wise, what do we, if, if Carwell gave us a call, what would we race it against? It's got to be, Carwell, it's got to be a muscle vehicle. Big American muscle car or something, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like a Hellcat or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Good fun, well, that's, uh, that's all we can do. Let's see if we yeah. get something sorted. Yeah. Uh, just looking at this door, it looks gorgeous. Like Clive was saying, you know, it's modern, but it's classic. It just has some really gorgeous lines. I think Norton have got a winner with this bike. It's V4. What is it? 1200cc or 1000? It's one of the two. Need to find out more about it. Lovely bike. No room for supercharger. No room for supercharger. <laughs> well, it's looking pretty fucking awesome. You've got some good stuff. You've got some really good stuff going on here. So the Indians know what they're doing. They buy Norton and make it really, really special. I'm still built in the UK. And it's really, really nice bikes. John Player Norton. Yeah, special. So the carbon fibers caught Yeah, it's really, really nice, isn't it? It's glorious. I love the curve on the seat. The seat's great. Yeah, I'd buy one. I'd buy one. Yeah. If I had the money. I'd just sell my left testicle. <laughs> Already sold my right one. <laughs> uh, that's limited edition, obviously. Yeah. What's the limited edition going for? Uh, I believe it's 51999. I'd have to double check that. I think it's about that, yeah. And the standard version, like the, is that a standard version there, the silver one? Yeah, that's 44. That's 44. Yeah. So you're paying about seven grand premium for a limited edition. Yeah. How, um, many, how, many, how many bikes? So between all of the limited editions, well, including the 961, so I think there's five altogether, there's only going to be 125 altogether. Right. So there might be... 25 of each or whatever. Maybe. There might yeah. be one of those and 124 of those. Yeah. So it depends on which... Feedback of what people... Which, yeah, it depends on the orders, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Similar price to the Super Booster then? Yeah, similar price to the Super Booster. Yeah. Which, of course, would just blow anything Norton has got in the weeds. The old uh, Triumph Bobber, been a, a real um, money spinner for Triumph, I think. Great little bike, aren't they? With Jody at Thornton 100 doing all these changes and be supplying supercharger kits for them. It, it's really good. Yeah, I mean, our supercharger kit fits the Bobber, the Bonneville, the Thruxton R, Thruxton RS, uh, the Speed Twin, you know, that supercharger kit giving up 260 horsepower for one of these 1200 twins it makes it an awesome tool. Yeah, I mean, we're selling a lot of those now. It's good stuff. And the Rocket 3 as well. Oh, we can't talk about the Rocket 3 enough, can we, really? Yeah, I mean, what a beast. Yeah. So there's Speed Triple 1200. This looks like it's crying out for a supercharger. It looks like there's a bit more room on this than uh, the other bikes. I think we could possibly get something in here. Nice little belt run. Put the power up to about 250 brake. That'd be quite a nice conversion, wouldn't it? Yeah. Looks like it's crying out for one. Yeah, I can really see myself uh, riding one of these. Really comfortable. It's not small. Yeah, love it. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. It's a cool looking bike. 
I think Triumph have got the design points really spot on. Really, really like this bike. See what Father Christmas can bring. Uh, it's very comfortable like uh, I pulled the screen uh, leaves. Kawasaki colour schemes really pop, don't they? They're really nice, sharp lines. And I love the design of the fairing where it's letting the air through the fairing and reducing drag. <coughs> Yeah, it's pretty clever stuff. Little screamer. So we've got the uh, Kawasaki H2, I haven't seen the H2R here yet, but it must be here somewhere. Size of those headers. Really big headers. So these H2s, we can uh, reprogram and we can get another 50 horsepower out of them. Yeah. So all the H2 range, it's all possible to remap the ECUs. And on average, we're getting around 50, 60 horsepower gains. Because uh, basically, we're opening the top up where Kawasaki are keeping it closed and then remapping to get enough fuel and get the ignition time in somewhere close so that we get the power. Um, and it's nice that we're able to do this with all these different Kawasaki's. And then what do you think about electric? Well, it's not for me. <laughs> I'm not a commuter. Yeah. I commute in luxury. I don't commute on a motorbike. Uh, I think electric vehicles got that place, but I don't think electric vehicles on motorbikes is the way to go. Maybe old hat, but I just don't like the idea. Looks like there's a nice bit of room for a nice little low boost setup. Stick the supercharger just here in a little belt run. I think we could make yeah. a, ni a nice little uh, supercharger conversion for that. Now here is a supercharger waiting to happen. It's already got an inspection cover to take a drive. So you got a supercharger drive there. Supercharger just here. Come underneath. We're so unassuming. And you'd have a, have a nice little 60 something horsepower hike in performance. I think it'd be pretty damn good. It's got all the brakes, should run really well. Well, this is something new. So, what's the special about the engine? What's the special about the engine? It's a two stroke. It is. It's a 90 degree V twin. Uh, apart from the barrels, everything else is CNC machine. Uh, it produces about 75 horsepower in this road going version we got. It's original form, which was uh, was a race engine, uh, that produced about 90. We cut the power so we can extend the service intervals on it. Yeah, how are you getting out uh, around the emissions side of things? New technology, um, it's got an electronic oil injection that's got its own separate oil map. So the ECU basically controls how much oil is injected at any given time, makes it run a lot more um, efficient. Yeah, yeah, and no doubt it's very light. Roughly about 120 kilos. 120 kilos and 70 horsepower. That's, That's a nice a combination. Nice combination. And what price are you going to be marketing them at? So we've, uh, we're doing a limited run of 100 of them. There are about 35 on the road now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Every everyone is built to order. So yeah. To one. And the price? Sorry, 35 on the road. Oh. Yeah. Like I say, we're only making 100 of them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's totally different, isn't it? it it's nice to see. So. Volkswagen brought out a Beetle, but they stole the idea from Ruff Superior. There's your flat four, air cooled flat four. It's a, I'm not sure whether it's a split twin or something. I'm not sure whether it's just one combustion chamber in there or whether it's two. It's not quite the same though, because the Beetle is one, one behind the other. This is stacked. It's cool though, isn't it? It's amazing. It's all been done before. Hey, so uh, we finally made it. We've got to the MCM Dream Garage. Super boosters here. A lot of other really individual, classy stuff. Uh, Joker's here with uh, Thornton 100 bike. And that's a nice thing to look at. Oh, there's some classic stuff, you know, two-stroke races. You know, these are from a long time back. But with a modern twist, it's got, looks like it's got carbon wheels on this. Yeah. 
GSXR 1100. I used to do... Uh, that one. Yeah. So this GSXR 1100. We did 1340 kits and 1371 kits before anybody else in the country or in the world at the time. We had uh, Cosworth pistons in it. So uh, Paul Bembridge, who used to work for me until he retired early this year, and uh, the reason I met him was he had a Jigsaw 1100, which he was running in the 990 class, and he wanted more power. So we built him a motor, 1371, big cams, big carburetors, uh, good exhaust, stunt size exhaust, and he won the championship two years running. And yeah, you know, he absolutely loved it. It was well over power for the 990 class, but it enabled him to dial it in. Um, and his reactions were there to win the, win the championship twice, twice. He was a customer first. He was a customer before he was my sales there manager. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, good old boy, we'll still have a lunch now and again. Uh, what, what, uh, what made you think uh, of like, designing this bike then? What, what's the, the, the thought the process behind it? Yeah. Well, Suzuki dropped the ball, didn't they? They should have brought out a booster that was better than anything else. And they brought the electronics, they brought the looks of the bike, bring it up to speed, up to 2022. Um, but it made no more power. So put the supercharger on it and then doing some tweaks to make it look even better. Single-sided arm, the winglets, we had those designed by a Formula One design engineer. And they really do a good job on keeping the front end down at high speed. It's good for 218 mile an hour. I've done 218 mile an hour on it. Okay. It'll do naught to 200 in 14 seconds. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 380 brake. Um, We've got different colour schemes. Uh, the forge on it is 40 years of TTS. I've been around 41 years now. Okay. So when we did this last year, uh, we're doing a limited edition run of 39 more of them. Okay. And we, we've got three of them sold. You know, we never expected it to be a, like a main gravy boat. We expected it really just for the publicity for yeah. the company. Uh, but number one sold, number three sold, number 16 sold. So. Uh, Will we be seeing this racing then? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's not a race bike, but you know, I've done nine 267 mile an hour on it, on the quarter mile. Um, somebody lighter than me would maybe a bit sharper reactions than I have at my pension age. <laughs> um, you know, I reckon we can get in the eights next year with it, without too much effort. It seems a lot of effort at the moment, but we will get there. Uh, we've just changed the clutch to make the clutch a lot more progressive, because it is much too aggressive and front end was coming up yeah. you couldn't slide it in it's the way Suzuki have done the, they've got a built-in lock-up clutch on it as standard so as soon as it starts grabbing it pulls in so you've got no control over that but um, we've changed all that to the Gen 2 uh, with some stronger springs and we won't be able to get out until what March next year with the other track uh, but when we get out we should have a lot better 60 foot times okay. and then we'll get in the eight yeah. Gonna get in the eight. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. a target. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. It's funny people say about the H2R. Yeah. This at 7,000 RPM. This makes a hundred brake horse more than an H2R. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And overall, a standard H2R on our dyno makes about 260 brake. Yeah. So we're making more than a hundred brake all the way through more than an H2R oh, at okay. lower RPM. So we've got 200 foot pound of torque. Uh, how, do that, how do you keep that torque on the back tyre? Suzuki's electronics are really good. They've got, yeah, yeah. They've got lift, lift function and you can dial that in from 0 to 10. I'm running on 2 which is virtually off and that lets the front wheel come up about 3-4 inches and it just stays there. You just keep it pinned and it doesn't come up any higher. It just, then change gear. You see the lift, you know when you're, the engine's being pulled back. Um, so to reduce to stop it wheeling, they've got to reduce yeah. the power. So they close the throttle and they retard, retard the ignition. But it tells us when it's working because LF flashes on the dash. So LF flashes right through to third gear, where it's controlling how fast we can go because it's stopping us wheeling. Wheeling in third gear? Yeah. I mean, that sounds epic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're only, if it's geared up so high, uh, at Santa Fod, we've gone through 167 in fourth gear. 
you know, and it is a maxed out import. It's so high geared. Wow. You know, it does over 100 mile an hour in first. <laughs> so when do I get a go? <laughs> um, when you put the deposit down. <laughs> oh, don't be like that. So can you just tell us who you are? Um, kind of like, yeah, who you are basically. So your name and what you do. Yeah. Okay, so my name is Richard Albans. I own TTS Performance Parts Limited. We've been around since 1982. Uh, and last year we decided that to celebrate 40 years we would build something special. And Suzuki gave us the ideal tool. They brought out the new Hayabusa, which had everything going for it except for the performance. So, performance being my game, that's what we did. We put forged pistons and rods, different cams into the engine and our supercharger. And the, the result was 370 horsepower. 200 foot-pound of torque versus 190 horsepower, 115 foot-pound of torque. We've geared it up, as you know, because Bruce has done it, we've been to 200, 218 miles an hour on the limiter. It'll go faster than that, but you know we're making 280 mile an hour in less than a mile. Um, so there's no point in going out for mile records until we get it geared up even higher. Um, we've got carbon fiber rotor box wheels on it, which is state of the art. Look at those spokes, they're only three millimeters thick and really, really lightweight. They, they lost 12 kilos off the stop, stop wheels. Um, we had the wings designed by uh, a Formula One aerodynamicist and they really work. They were very expensive to produce. Um, they've got a subframe inside that ties the two together so the wings don't pull the fairing off. Uh, so they're really structural uh, and do a really good job. Uh, we like the idea of showing off the wheel, so we thought, let's go for a single-sided swinging arm. Um, Rotor box did this really nice swing, uh, really nice wheel. So I didn't want to reinvent the wheel and put something together that had not been tested. And Kawasaki came out with the H2 with a single-sided arm, and I looked at it. And I thought, with some engineering and welding, we could put the H2 swing arm into the Hayabusa, and that's what we've done. So. Uh, it makes the bike about an inch longer in wheelbase, which is an advantage with all its power. It helps keep the power down. Um, and then, of course, I talked with Carl Lee about the design, and he did some lovely renderings. Um, we've created superbooster.com website, which Carl designed the website. And we've got all different uh, paint schemes that he's designed. So anybody can buy one of these bikes. We've got a limited edition of 40. Um, number one, number three, and number 16 is sold and uh, they can choose any one of the paint designs on the website or if they wanted, if they wanted something special like the Garvey number 16, he wanted Kevin Swamp's Lucky Stripe colors. So uh, Carl's working with him on a paint scheme for that. And that's all in the pipeline. Um, anybody who's ridden it just can't believe how civilized the bike is. Yeah, yeah. You know, it just pulls from nothing. You can be in top gear and roll on from a thousand RPM. Uh, it just goes like a train. You've got the software where you've got different rider modes. They've got A, B, and C, and U1, 2, and 3. So we made it so that if you were in the rain, it's still rideable. In fact, uh, to a Western runway, I did 10.5 at 155 in the rain. Oh, uh, wow. With no issues. Everything was lighting up on the dash, traction control, lift function, everything was lighting up. But it's totally controllable. It didn't wheel spin, it didn't get out of shape. And, you know, it's only a second and a bit down on its fastest uh, time. So, you know, Suzuki have done a fantastic job on the electronics and we're lucky enough to be able to get into those electronics and modify them to our needs and make the Super Booster what it is. So we've got it on our Dream Garage stand today. What do you think of the Dream Garage stand overall? Uh, it takes me back, you know, I'm long in the tooth, I'm 70 next year and I've had uh, the GSXR 1100, I've had the Yamahas, I've had the GT750 Suzuki. Um, I've been around a long time tuning and racing bikes and preparing lots of race bikes. Certainly in the, in the heydays of 80s and 90s, we used to do nothing but tune four stroke motorbikes for racing and the odd road bikes, you know. Um, all the Japanese manufacturers had 
big multi-cylinder bikes that were so mildly tuned, there was a colossal amount of performance that could be gained from them. So they were real heydays. We did, used to do a colossal amount of work, import everything from the States, uh, create my own machine shop, used to do all our reboring, all our gas flowing, um, modifying of gearboxes, etc. Uh, and we still do all that today, but I tend to concentrate just on supercharging. Uh, supercharging is the only way around for a road bike where you can get some big gains over what's already available. Uh, what it does mean is like, you know, all the thousands of rev, 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 there are lots of revs, and they've got no mid-range guts. Um, we're looking at, with Rotrex, uh, we're looking at producing a supercharger that will suit those motorbikes and fit a lot of those where it'll make the bike more civilized. You won't need to rev to the rev limiter to go past. You know, so where they've got no power below 9,000 revs in reality, you know, like you get a Duke that will rev to 14, 15,000 revs. Nothing happens till 9,000 revs. So we can transform that so it's got power and torque from idle and you don't have to scrimp it to the red line. And it makes it a much more civilized road bike. And of course, Kawasaki know that. That's why they're transferring their supercharged H2 into so many different models. Because people love them. It, it's an infinite power band and there's no downside. Um, the upside is, of course, that when you're not on boost, you're driving around, you're not straining the motor like you would be if it was a highly tuned motorbike, you know? Uh, so your fuel consumption doesn't suffer when you're cruising around. Uh, and when you want the power, it's instantly there. There's no throttle lag like there would be with a turbo. Uh, you know, I'm sure Kawasaki would have come out with a turbo if it, they thought it was suitable for the road, yeah. you know? But we beat Kawasaki by 20 years. So, uh, yeah, hats <laughs> off to Rotrex for making it such a lovely little unit. Um, and, you know, they're progressing more and more and developing more and more units to suit different applications. Um, we're on board with them. Yeah. So the future is really bright. Yeah. What's your favourite on the stand then? What do you, what do you think? Uh, favourite on this stand? Uh, Hard, isn't it? <laughs> well, especially a couple of times. <laughs> Just because I'm, I know the bike so well, uh, the Suzuki GSX-R1100, I've done, done, worked with so many of those and they've always responded well and been a joy to work on. Uh, that was the start of the big power bikes and, I, you know, if one came in tomorrow I know exactly what to do with that, I haven't forgotten anything. I know the cam timing, I know the cams, I know the compression ratios we work to, uh, you know, what carburetors to fit on it, etc, etc. Uh, and I would love one of those for the road again. Yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. So you've been around the show already, haven't you? So what's your favourite bit of the show? Last thing, last thing. Favourite bit of the show? Not the electric bikes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the pub's calling. I think we need a beer. That would yeah. be, be the favourite part, but that will come later. Yeah. We saw a stand about welding. Yeah. yeah. And it'd be interesting to see Lee prove himself that he can actually weld. Oh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, a fraud, it, it I? A, <laughs> it'd be really funny, actually, because it was a free tuition lesson. Honestly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's not far from the that. stage. Yeah. Right, so you can go there and you do didn't this. Say what type of welding? So, um, I'd like to learn TIG. I'd like to learn TIG. Can you show us? All right, you can't do And you go. Fucking hell, you welded before! <laughs> yeah. You can just say, I didn't realise it was that easy. Could I be a welder? <laughs> <laughs> it bowls a piss chuck to me. Yeah. So what are your thoughts I, on the show so far? I, I think there's a lot more at the show than I anticipated. Don't know. I think I might, if it's as big as this next year, they do me a deal on a stand like they normally do deals. Um, it'd be nice to get a selection of our bikes up and our customers' bikes, and um, yeah, a lot of interest. There's a lot of interest on the Edmonton show of, about our Super Booster, and yeah, yeah, it's a nice place to be. And you know, weather sprints beer isn't too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I met Nikki at the Triumph Do by Thornton 100 back last Christmas, yep, that's it, yeah, and uh. Nikki's a great bike rider and she just loves her motorbikes. So we're going to give her the opportunity to ride the Super Booster when the weather's right. And she's not so far away from us, so it could work out quite quickly. We can sort it out. 
and yeah, what do you think? Are you up for I'm, it? I am up for it. I'm actually a little bit nervous, but I'm super excited to try, you know, something with a supercharge as well. So I've ridden the rocket um, yeah. and I'd just love to see the difference between the two, you know, a standard rocket to one that's been supercharged. Yeah, so not only the super booster, but you want to ride my rocket, my supercharged rocket. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so yeah, so we've got 300 foot pound of torque, 360 horsepower yeah. on a rocket yeah. for little you to ride. <laughs> ah, you're gonna have fun. You're gonna I, have fun. Definitely, yeah. I'm super excited. And yeah. as I said, I'm really nervous, but yeah, bring it on. I, I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna have to hire to a Western yeah. and give you a runway so you can get all the freedom, no messing with traffic. And you can just go for broken and just enjoy the experience of riding both bikes. I think that's going to be fantastic. Oh, so we can film that for our channel as well. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. 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 Film it for your channel as well. Oh, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, I'll be filming as well. So that would be interesting. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So I'm that's, that's going to be tremendous. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be a good day. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll stay in touch. Yeah. As soon as we get some a break in the weather, yeah. we'll get the bikes up there. It'll be an early start. Yeah. and uh, dodging the aeroplanes uh, but it's going to be great Excellent. Uh, look forward to it so do I, lovely, yeah. thank you Definitely. very much well so we're on the Yamaha stand uh, the Yamaha that I cut my teeth on was a YL1 100cc twin and then I had a YR5 which was a 350 two stroke twin which used to do 11 miles to the gallon when I used to thrash its ass off day in day out going to work and back when I was a teenager um, nothing that, like that around now, but look at the classic looks of some of these bikes, they're gorgeous. Uh, Yamaha have done a great job. Now, this bike, this, this 900 is dying for our supercharger. We've done the MT-09, but uh, the XSR 900 there's more room for a supercharger and it'd be a much neater installation and we've got rods and pistons coming for it so that we can make a really powerful 900 something around 160 170 horsepower from a little 900 that weighs next to nothing i think that'd be really great any of these 300 900 yamahas our new kit is going to fit it's going to be an awesome Thing for the future but remember it'll always need an engine build it needs forged pistons and forged rods we know that the engine is not very strong as it comes no point in buying a supercharger kit off me for, to blow it to pieces you need to pay out and have a really nice job if you want something different that performs with the best then our new supercharger kit for these 900s is the way to go so this is the uh, yamaha nikon and Nikon has got the same 900cc en triple engine as these other bikes around us, or the SXR, etc. I've got one of these coming in in January for a supercharged kit. So the guys booked this in nine months ago. We've got the rods, we've got the pistons, and we're going to rebuild this engine to make it strong, and we're going to put a supercharged kit on. The guy can't wait. And it's going to be interesting to see what a, a Nikon rides like and drives right with 160 horsepower. It's going to be a beast. Yeah, so there's no real point in trying to supercharge uh, Yamaha R01s, GSX-R1000s, ZX-10s. With the supercharged range we've got, the C1560, sure it'll give a colossal amount more mid-range power, but we won't get a lot more peak power than what these bikes have got to offer to start with and there is absolutely no room to fit a supercharger so it's getting more and more difficult to pick and choose what supercharger kit to do next yeah. uh, and that's why we're here we're just looking see what the demand is talking to customers every day i get customers say can you do this to a ducati can you do that to a ktm and the only way to look is get to a place like this and look yeah. at all the bikes see what the viability is so you know this is a street fighter b4s ducati and people rave about ducatis but it's so much a bit sir you know this looks great maybe a little bit higher maybe incorporating this so you don't have b4 
bits hanging off the bike everywhere. Indicators, why can't the indicators be part of here? Why can't they be down here either side? Why can't they be integrated? You know, there's, there's a lot to my, in my mind that Ducati just haven't got right, you know? Yeah. Tremendously fast bike, electronics really work well. Obviously, there, there's an input now from Audi. There's some money behind the whole shop. I believe Audi own Ducati, I'm not sure. Yeah, they do, yeah. Um, you know, wings, make them do more than one thing. Simplify things, you know, like Suzuki have integrated the indicators. Why can't the indicators be up here? Why can't they be either side, you know? I nice see KTM here. Their MotoGP bike looks absolutely stunning. And they're so fast. And Danny, Danny Pretorius, who remember his races against our Super Booster, him on a lightweight KTM GP bike, takes some beating. So we've got the Royal Enfield stand here. Royal Enfield. Still back in India, still back in the 50s, 40s, 60s, whatever. They don't do anything for me at all. I don't know, don't know what their market is. I don't think it's a market for the UK. They just don't look anything in my mind. That's my personal opinion. Come on then, what are you building next? There must so be something interesting in the we're, we're, We've got to get you out on uh, the rocket. Um, I've got to rebuild it with a new clutch because uh, I tipped the can a bit and we've got 303 foot-pound of torque, two, 361 horsepower. Yeah. yeah, I took it to Santa Pod, first run missed the gear, second run just spun up, third run did a burnout, second gear launch, second gear just poured the air, kept going, kept going, kept going, I had to back off and shut and change gear, change it to third, clutch just let go. So it was an abortive day, but I still did a, a 10-2 at only 130 mile an hour. And wow. we've done we've done 10-0 at 153. Yeah. So, you know, we get we have some fun with it. Yeah, all easy. Maybe there'll be an eight uh, drag strip, you know. Challenge accepted. Yeah, gotta go for it. You gotta stop wheel spinning though. No, exactly, yeah. I can still hear that super booster in my head going. Yeah, yeah, there's oh, a lot to learn with that bike, but you know, she's still around and uh, we've just changed the exhaust system. We've got a nice side exit exhaust on it now, which looks really trick. Every, car's pleased with it and he designed the whole thing. Yeah. So for him to say he's happy with what I've done, that's a plus. Uh, just sold another one. So yeah, I, out in the wild now, then. yeah I've got uh, an Indian guy, Ali. He's uh, put his name down for one. And he wants a second one that is just a booster with a supercharger on it. Yeah. So he's not happy with one, he wants one for his showroom and one to ride. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So yeah, if that all comes off, that'd be wonderful. And um, yeah, onward and upward, boy. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm looking at this BMW R18. Um, I personally think BMW got, the, got their head up their ass. I don't understand, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. You know, let's cover everything up that works. Let's cover it all up and make it look like an electric motor with a couple of fins on the side. This bit I like, all this, gross, gross. I just don't get it at all. Zero SRX concept bike. So zero all into electric bikes. To me, electric bikes will never have any soul. Um, this is, in my mind, an abomination. What, what does it do? What does it do? A whole 17 kilowatts. Monstrous thing, big brakes. It's different, but it's, it's not for an old school guy like me who just likes power and proper thumping four-stroke motors. No, electric will never do it for me. We've had a middle of the look around the Honda stand, and to me it's the same old, same old. There's a lot of corporate 
decisions made and nothing is excelling like with the Italian market. The Italians have got flair. I think Hondas are really, really struggling to give you something new and exciting. It's all right to have a CBR 600 giving 120 horsepower, but it looks like the one that's 10 years ago. It doesn't do it for me. It'd be nice to supercharge it, make it 200 horsepower 600, then we'd be talking. And I could do it, but I don't think there's a market because you buy a bigger bike instead. Here we go. <coughs> so, king of the hill, Suzuki. Suzuki is the bike that you tune. Everybody tunes Suzuki. Suzuki's love to be just massaged and improved upon. They're great bikes to start with, with a good base. And I think uh, nothing has changed there. St we've still got the Busa, we've still got the Jix of Thals, the new Suzuki GSX uh, 800s, uh, the twin cylinder bike. That'd be interesting to see how that would respond to a supercharger, because I think the same bike with 140 horsepower, a nice little supercharger giving lots of torque, would be an extremely nice bike to ride for not a lot of extra money. But at the end of the day, why would you buy an 8S for 140 horsepower and then spend a load of money on a supercharger when you could go out and buy a, a GSX 1000S? But then we could put a GSX 1000S supercharger on and make it faster than any of the other super, uh, any of the other Suzuki's. So, the higher boosters over there. Yeah, so we've got higher boosters. We can make a a lot of sales on supercharge. Our, our new supercharge kit for the uh, Ayabusa works really well on Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, B-King, different modifications for each one, but the basic design is still there and it performs day in, day out. So these come with the craft bits from the factory, yeah? That's an extra and over. That puts another couple of grand on the price. Yeah. Um, and of course, a crop pitch, you've got to do what they're told as far as getting the emissions down and making them work and noise. Yeah. So, mm, to me, a, a crop pitch is a bit of a catch-22. It sounds good, it looks good. Uh, performance gains, I should think, are negligible. Yeah. And it costs you a couple of grand more. You might as well go out and get a proper exhaust system end-to-end. Now, this is the 25th anniversary model. I love the paint scheme on this. Everybody loves the paint scheme on this. Right. It looks terrific. You know, ah, the, the extra line just mimics this. They've really, really done a super job. But it just needs a little hole cut in here, around here, and a supercharger <laughs> just there. And then it's a super booster. And it's done. It's done. It finishes the job. Yeah, so close to my heart, Suzuki Katana. I built a Super Street Katana with fiberglass, no carbon fiber in those days, fiberglass tank seat, fairing, everything. 1428 motor, big carburetors, and back in. I'd like to say 1980-something, I can't remember when it was now, it's a long time ago, we had 212 horsepower out of a normally aspirated 1428 motor. And the guys in the States, we knew Jack O'Malley pretty well at the time. He saw what I'd done and he took a lot, he took my cams, he took my carburetors, and he started selling some of the stuff that I developed on my bike. And I was just in the wrong country, you know? We did lots of good stuff and we made really, really good power, but the market was 1% of what the US market was at the time. So, this is a Lucky Strike colored Suzuki. Not 100% sure which model it is, it's a GSX-R. SRAD by the looks of it, might be an SRAD late 90s. But it's got the Lucky Strike colours on it, as has this bike. But the real bike is the Kevin Swans replica RG500. And 
the guy who's buying number 16 Super Booster is having this color scheme on his Super Booster. Oh, Carl me. Lee, Carl Lee is doing it. It's going to be number 34 and it'll be mint, absolutely mint. So it's nice to see that here so that I could tell guys what this guy's going to have for his Super Booster. It's going to look insane. Yeah, so we've had a day at the uh, Motorcycle Live show. Tons of good stuff here. I've really enjoyed myself. Had a couple of beers. So that's it. That's here at Motorcycle Live. Gonna ride that home. Yeah! Okay, so if you like what we've talked about, like all what we've seen today, like what I do, like the fact that we're still supercharger crazy and horsepower mad, then like and subscribe, give us a big thumbs up, and uh, we'll speak to you again soon.